Hi, my name is Kelly Hood and I'm a cybersecurity engineer with Optic Cyber Solutions and I want to wel welcome you back to our second video in our cybersecurity risk series. Today in our video we're going to be focusing on not just what is cybersecurity risk but how do we measure it once we've identified that risk, how do we know how much we care. So in the last video, we talked a lot about what is a cybersecurity risk and why do we need to think about it differently from any other business risk. So we know we've got a threat. In this case, we're looking at a tornado, something that's going to act on our business. We need our vulnerability, that thing that the threat will act on um, to exploit something within our business. And then the risk itself, which in this case is our paper, our sensitive papers blowing down the street, um, potentially having a, a severe impact on our operations. So once we understand what our risks are, we need to think about how that's going to impact our business. And we've got a few examples here that I wanted to walk through, really thinking through, you know, what is the likelihood of that to occur? And if it was to occur, how bad would it be? Um, we can see here on the screen, I have a few examples of somebody just trying to walk down the road and, and finding a pothole or in some cases a, a much larger chasm that they would need to cross. We can see in the first example at the top that there's a high likelihood that they're going to have to step into that hole, but relatively it'll be a low impact. They'll be able to keep moving along. Um, best case scenario we see in that second one where there's a low likelihood that you'll fall in and a low impact. Um, but we can see with that third option where we've got a low likelihood, but a high impact. If you happen to trip and fall in, it's not going to be a good day for you. Um, but it's a relatively low likelihood that that would occur. And then that fourth option is really where we're going to want to spend a lot of our time and focus on those areas that are a high likelihood and a high impact that we're going to want to manage and prioritize um, our actions so that we can make sure to prevent these from occurring. So here we want to think about how do we measure that level of risk. In the last slide we saw kind of theoretically, you know, what it means in a simple example. But for us, as we start thinking about our cybersecurity risk and specifically back to those papers blowing down the street, for every business that's going to be, you know, it's going to have a different likelihood um, of occurrence and a different impact if it was to occur to help us get to that risk level to figure out basically how much do we care and, and what kind of actions do we need to take um, to prevent that from occurring. So there's a lot of different ways that we can measure likelihood and impact. We can use a qualitative method, a quantitative method. Um, we can find you know, some kind of hybrid in the middle, but really we need to find some way of measuring in a consistent format you know, how impactful it would be if it were to occur and what's the likelihood of occurrence. And then once we have those values, we can bring them together into a chart similar to this that's just pulled from NIST SP800 30 um, to look at, you know, look at on a scale if we have a, um, a certain likelihood level and a certain impact level, what would that overall risk level be to help us be able to prioritize and manage moving forward. So that leads us to the next question. How much risk is okay? If we obviously we want to have very low risks across the board, but we know that's not always practical. So in which cases are we okay with higher risk? Where do we or maybe moderate risk? And how do we know what we need to do about it? Um, on the next couple slides, I wanted to talk through a few terms, starting with risk appetite, um, that will help us to define these things. So risk appetite really helps a company think about what you're worried about. You know, what is the type or the amount of risk that you're willing to accept? What are those things that you want to be measuring? So in some cases, it might be the um, uptime of your systems. In other cases, it's the amount of data that may be disclosed. Uh, but we want to think, what are those things that we're, we're wanting to prevent that are important to our company? And then we can layer in and start thinking about our risk tolerance. If we know we're worried about the availability of our systems and we want to make sure that our, um, our sales engine maybe is up and running always and our websites are up, that customers can come and purchase products from us, um, how much downtime is okay or is any downtime okay? But that's where the risk tolerance comes in where we can start to define that and put the metrics on the scale to say, if we're down for five minutes, that's going to be catastrophic to our business. Or maybe it's not until we're down for five hours that's really going to be catastrophic. But using the risk tolerance, we can start to think about how much loss is acceptable and what are we willing to do about it to prevent that from occurring. 
So taking us back to our first example earlier, I wanted to think about, you know, what are those potential actions that we can take? Once we understand our risk, we know what our tolerance is, or we know what our appetite is, we know what our tolerance is, and then we realize that there are some risks that we are okay with, there's some we need to act on, but what does that mean? And really here, I wanted to talk through the four primary methods for managing risk. And we can see them in blue on the screen here. We have acceptance, avoidance, mitigation, and transference. So acceptance is back to that, that tiny pothole that may be a low likelihood, low impact. That you say really, you know, it would be it wouldn't be great, it'd be a bad day, but we're willing to accept it because maybe the cost of implementing some type some type of mitigation would be more than just accepting the loss itself. So maybe in some cases we'll just accept it. There's also risk avoidance. So if there's an option to say, if we go on this new business venture, then we will have this pile of new risks. Maybe we say that's not the business venture for us. And so we can always avoid those risks. Um, mitigation is whenever we decide we really do need to keep moving in this direction or we have a lot of tornadoes, we know we deal with a lot of paper, we're going to have to build a safer building or we're going to have to take some kind of action and build a bridge to cross our, our chasm here. And then transference is one where we're looking at other ways to offset that risk. And in a lot of cases, we see this as cyber insurance, where we know if something were to occur, it would be bad. We can't avoid it. We're not willing to accept it. There's not a great way to mitigate it. So we're simply going to transfer that risk to someone else, or in this case, maybe a buddy that we're going to ask to cross over first. So in summary, we want to think about how we can measure risk to help us enable better management of those risks for our business, specifically around cybersecurity. To do that, we know we're going to need to look at the likelihood and impact that enables us to get to those risk levels, um, that we can then think about our risk appetite. What are we really worried about and what are we willing to accept as we get into that risk tolerance? Is it five minutes of downtime? Is it five days of downtime? What are those metrics around that that we're willing to accept? And then once we have an understanding of our risks, our risk levels, and we can prioritize them, we can start to act upon those and address and manage those risks through the four categories listed below of acceptance, avoidance, mitigation, and transference. So I want to thank you again for joining us in this risk series, and I hope this was really helpful to you to better understand how to measure cybersecurity risk. Um, we do, again, have a few resources available on our website on OpticCyber.com, um, and then I pointed out a few industry uh, resources as well, back to NIST SP830 that has a lot of information on how to conduct risk assessments, uh, NISTR 8286, which talks a lot about enterprise risk management and uh, risk uh, appetite and risk tolerance and also the risk management framework that we'll dig into a little bit more in a future video talking about how we can manage risk uh, from a system and organization perspective for both government and commercial organizations. Um, but I want to thank you again. My name is Kelly Hood. I hope you found this video helpful and please feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you.